Cinnamon Coney the Art Sherpa, and I am going to be showing you how to paint a cherry tree line street today in acrylic painting, step by step. It's a two hooter. On the mic is my husband John. Oh, hi guys. He's gonna be tracking me, stalking me, following me, running around with all these robotic cameras, making sure that you guys are like really up close in the paint action. You know how like in football, like they zoom in and you can see all the action. It's like that, but much, much less exciting. Because we're watching paint dry. <laughs> Just calling it for what it is. I mean, you got to know who you are, right? Like, yeah. we're fun, but it is, it's not the same as like a, a massive quarterback tackling somebody else and oh. they can replay and rewind. We do what we can with paint. Now, I'm not going to start anything, but, you know, I will say that I've been to a couple of Astros games where huh. I thought I was there just to watch the grass grow. Wow, you did just start something. I'm okay, so I would like to say that I've been salt free. Since 2015, <laughs> and I'm not responsible for his sodium uptake. <laughs> Where my somewhere my 13 year old just died a little bit inside. <laughs> so you teach painting? I do. I teach painting, and it's really fun. I also drink coffee while I tell you that I'm going to teach you to paint. I'm going to be using an 11 by 14 kind of canvas panel board. These are like come in packs. Um, the only thing to watch for on these, they're all really ready to paint. They work pretty well. They store well. Stretch canvas or the panel is fine. If you get these too wet, they can warp a little bit. And so that's just a thing to be aware of. But as long as you're not like, you know, setting them out to see, they should be all right. I'm going to be using different brands of acrylic paint today. All the colors are in the description below and the materials that I'm going to be using will be listed, including the brushes when I'm all done. In the description below, we have a traceable, which you can find on the website, just in case you're like, I would like to paint, but I don't want to draw. So, hey, drawing is fun, and there's a bunch of cool channels about that on YouTube. So, you know, maybe something else to take up. And I'm going to be going over every, every step of it. And all you really got to do is sort of like, I do a thing, you do a thing, I do a thing, you do a thing. And at the end, voila, we have a painting. It's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. And we do it live because I'm brave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm brave. We also... Speaking of, I do need my reference photo, though. That'll help. <laughs> oh, I got one. Oh, Look. you have one. You guys yeah. get one, and I get one. So, woohoo for us. <laughs> we're we're semi-prepared today. Are we? I don't know. I'm going to put my little Hilo brushes to the side so I'm not so crowded. Out already, what I put out is a Thalo Blue, a Burnt Umber, and a Titanium White. And I'm going to mix an incredibly light background color. I'm going to take a small amount of Thalo Blue. And I'm going to work this into this white. Boop, boop, boop. The thing, the reason you have to be super cautious with phthalo is that it's very staining. So it doesn't take a lot of the paint to tone your white. Got you up there now. See, See how we're doing? And I'm going to get a smidge, a smidge of my brown. The uh, burnt umber is not very staining. So that doesn't, you can see, change the color as much as the phthalo blue did. And what I'm using is a Scotty knife. This is part of my palette knife set. Uh, they're little plastic knives. You can use, you can honestly use a customer loyalty card to do this thing I'm doing right here. Now you've got the wishes already up at the canvas, yeah? I do, and I'm going to give those to everybody before I paint them out. But thank you for reminding me just in case I started painting them. It was like, wait, wishes well, and good intentions for the universe. I have a bunch too. I know you get that palette knife going and you're like, Woo, it's Oof, fun. Isn't it satisfying? Have you ever just like, you like painting and you start mixing with the palette knife and you find yourself in your own palette knife mixing video where you're just like, it's so satisfying. All right. So we have good wishes for Patty's for a baby, um, going through some health stuff and we're definitely wishing that sure pop pulls through and everything is okay. Barbara to have abundance to finish school, like just some sort of wonderful little break so she can afford to finish school. Bridget wishes everyone, all of us, to have strength for the challenges that each of us are facing. I think that's a very selfless wish, Brenda. Um, bunch of wishes for strength and restoration to people who just went through all these fires and were so sad that, that was, that's happened to so many people and that it was intentional as an extra layer of sad. Um, a bunch of healing for fibromyalgia. Uh, there's so many paint, people painting who have fibromyalgia. I have many friends who are. It is really helpful with that, but we just also have extra love in our hearts because it's just a really challenging thing to live with. So I would even go a cure, compassion, and all of us to see an end to this as an illness that people suffer with at all. 
Um, Kim is uh, hoping for a good CT result. Debbie is just needing some uplifting and strength. And then there's wishes for Frederick, Fredericton, New Brunswick. We're just going to send them light and love and healing to their entire community and all their protectors that work there. We're just really sorry. Yeah. Okay. So these are our wishes. They are done in watercolor pencil, and that sort of wishes. helps them blend into the paint. Another thing that I do to help it, and see, remember I said the thing about wetting the canvas? I'm going to mist this super lightly, because if I mist it heavily, then this is going to turn into an airfoil. <laughs> no. Start to bow a bit. And I'm just going to lighten this purple so that it goes uh, back into my canvas before I put the paint in. A little bit. Again, I don't want this to, like, warp on me. I'm going to throw some love out there to the... Uh to the birthday people of today. I know Debbie and a whole bunch of other shirt pets are having birthdays, so I'm just going to send some love out to them while you're painting that out. Yeah, wherever you are, wherever you are in the time continuation, even if your day is a different day than this, but you watch this on your birthday, happy birthday to you. Absolutely. Happy birthday to all in all perpetuity across all time, as long as there's a YouTube. <laughs> ha! Or even beyond. I've been waiting for Jeannie to ask me that three wish thing, so I think this up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have legal wishing thinking here. It was we all came up in the Aladdin time. <laughs> That's right. So I am loading my brush, and you'll notice that I'm flipping it. I dip in the water. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to flip it. And what this is doing is this is pulling the paint into the belly of my brush, and it's going to allow me to just cover the whole canvas. Now, I'm doing a bluer background than what we have in our reference photo, and the reason that I'm doing that is I think it's going to help our pink really pop. Yeah. Now, you know, so sometimes when you're looking at a photo, we're going to talk about this a lot, you'll make minor changes to help improve, you know, maybe the photograph itself. <laughs> a lot of times I get compliments like, oh, I like the painting better than the picture. And yeah. that's what that's about is that I make little edits or alterations to small things within my reference photo to improve it. All of you guys in my 18 plus challenge or doing challenge photos, remember to do that. When I give you challenge photos, I do curate pretty good ones, but you're always supposed to be finding your own space in that photo. Hmm. All right. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's a really nice color. Just saying, that is like a really nice robin eggs blue. Ooh, it's super saturated on the screen. Okay. <laughs> I think it's... it's I'm going to rinse my brush out thoroughly. It's a thorough rinse. You guys ready for a thorough rinse? It's a little rinse? dimmer on that one. Huh? So it's, I think it's, um, it's kind of split between the brightness on that one and that one. It's a little, I'm gonna, I'll tune this one up to touch. Yeah. Too. That's okay. I was going to grab my traceable anyways, because I did some interesting sketching to help me play it. Don't go anywhere. They're not going, where are they going to go? I don't know where they're going to go. I mean, I'm like, you don't go anywhere. I'm I need you to run the either. show. Ooh, there we go. Maybe that's a little more. Okay. Eh, yeah. Oh, so this goes. is the traceable. The, you can print these out from our website for free, and we provide those to you guys as, um, just as a convenience for you so you're not stressing out. But sometimes when I sketch out a painting, what it does is it helps me break it down into simpler parts and see a, a less complicated way through the project. Now, I'm going to dry this panel. And at this point, John is going to nervously talk to you while the paint dries. But I'm not being salty. All right. So what I will say is while you guys are uh, uh, using your air mover to, like, uh, Dry your, dry your surface, make sure you use it on the lowest heat setting. And the reason you're going to want to do that uh, is because acrylic paint, um, it can can get color shift and it can uh, it can crack, especially your, your more budget-minded uh, product. So, uh, you know, and, and your pro paints, things like that, they're not going to have those color shift issues, but it's always just a good, good process to make sure that you're using uh, that on the lowest heat setting. And while you're at it, if you go and check in the description down below, you're going to find a link to our website where you'll find um, the traceable and the reference stuff and all the materials and everything you might need to be able to complete this project, along with links to many, many other projects. So that's probably a pretty good resource to check out. Um, other than that, I'm going to say, dude, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Uh, you know, this is like our favorite thing to do. We love coming and hanging out with you guys and doing this. And um, it's just the highlight of the day. There's so many other stresses and craziness and actually getting out here with you guys is really nice. So 
Well, I enjoy my paint time about as much as you guys enjoy your paint time. <laughs> We're both having a little break together and kind of letting our week go, aren't we? Whatever it was that maybe stuck with you this week, you know, let it go. And if you're celebrating something this week, don't forget to celebrate the good moments. Not only do we have to learn to put down the dark moments, we need to, need to lift up those good moments. I, it's something I'm super guilty of. Like, I'm so busy working all the time, I forget to celebrate the wins. I'm just like, wait, what happened? Yeah. Did we do good? Oh, good. And then I'm back on to the next working thing. But it's a very good friend of mine who's reminding me that you've got to stop and celebrate. Smell the coffee, she says, because she knows I don't stop to smell roses. Not that I wouldn't. I would totally smell roses if I was outside with roses. <laughs> <laughs> I want to share a really cool trick with you that I do. Okay. So this is back from my days as a studio assistant when I would have to block in canvases like 10, 20 a day. And there were different little things that you would do to make your job easier and less crazy making. And I used to have very expensive artist tape that I did this with, but I recently discovered I can use washing tape. <laughs> and I got a bunch of it on a discount. So I'm going to show you this trick with my washi tape. All right. You know, not that there's anything wrong with artist tape because, dude, I love it, especially the one that curves. I'm going to come up very low on my canvas, just about a third of the way up. And I'm going to make a little bit of washi tape just horizontally across here. See how we did? Yeah. And I'm going to just try to place this about the same space in, I'll show you on mine because I can't point yet to the thing. Like I'm trying to get it right here. This is my horizon line. So I want the washi tape to be above where I feel this is here. So the washi tape is essentially going right here. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. I just dropped my trace board. Sometimes perspective is so extreme, it's like our brains disbelieve it because the left brain doesn't let the right brain do its job. And I'm going to get this right to the edge so that I can tape things well. And one of the big things that I've got to get is the run. Huh? What would you find? Oh, it just went underneath. I was going to get it. It's way under there. Under the, I was just going to bend down and get it. You don't got to get it, baby. Yeah, it's my traceable. But you don't got to get it. Right, so what I can do is I find the space that I think that this is going to take, and I use this little tape. It helps me reposition. And the other thing that I do is it lets me change my mind. Oftentimes I'll demo stuff like chalk, different things that allow me to think about where placements are without really permanently impacting the canvas. And this is one of those tricks. I'm going to come here, and I've just got to make sure that I've got that right there. I see it. I have, a, I have this really beautiful uh, reference holder, book holder, actually, and I use it. It's super gorgeous. It's by um, Pioneer Woman, and, which I'm crazy about. And uh, so, but it's got this filigree in front, and sometimes it hides some of what I'm looking at. So you can see this is going to let me catch that street, isn't it? Look at that. So now I have this lovely perspective on my street, and when I go to do it later, I'm not going to be fighting and struggling to make those lines so much. And then I can be like, you know, are these narrow enough? Is this, is, is this opening? This is the opening. I want to make sure that this opening is very small and diminished because that's what gives us the perspective. So if you're trying to, like, close that and make it smaller, you would just increase the angle of the tape. Okay, how are we doing? Yeah. And because it's low-tack tape, it's not going to, I mean, it obviously sticks. You can see I'm, like, having to pull it up. But because it's low-tack tape, it's not going to make us um, tear the paint. And so this is another example of a low-tack tape. I got sent a bunch of beautiful painter tape. I'm just showing you guys a bunch of options. There we go. And we're just trying to get that center perfect. Perfect, perfect. Not perfect. We don't go for perfection. We don't go for perfection or normal here. All right, I think that's pretty good. I can always widen it, but this gives me a very nice, this is a one-point perspective piece. I have a whole quest on perspective, but basically when you're thinking about this and, and what you've got going on, perspective is how we pretend things are three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface. That's all it is. It's the illusion. It's the illusion. I'm going to also put out some black. Today, I am using Golden, Holbein, and Artist Loft. 
because they're all really good at pink. Yeah. And it's Artist Lab Professional 3. Not regular Artist Lab. It's Professional 3. I'm going to get my nice big brush again because it's going to do quick work of a lot of stuff. So I'm going to dip this in water. This brush is a number 30 bright short handle ruby satin. Ooh. And I'm going to go ahead and pull some of this interesting blue, maybe a little more brown, see what I'm doing, yeah. into my brush. Back and forth, back and forth. And I'll get a smidge. See, I'm going on the corners of the black, and I'll smidge in some, some black. Dip in the water. Back, 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 back. And let's just go back and forth. And start to put in this wonderful, wonderful street. So it's a horizontal stroke. As I zoom past your earrings, everyone's like, "Why did you get those?" I'm so oh, where did I get them? Yeah, they were a gift. Um, but I think I there I've seen them on Etsy, and I've also seen them on Amazon Handmade. Not these exact ones, just, just similar this style. I have a dog hair in here, <laughs> <laughs> and dog hair is in my canvas, and it Pixels. won't come out. Yeah. All right, there we go. There we go. So I have this nice gray streak. Now, one thing I may want to do is I have to decide, is this the color of my highlight? Is this the color of my shadow? And I think this is closer to the color of my highlight. So what I may do is come and add a little more white to the mix. See what I'm doing? Yeah. And just sort of lighten this a little bit. There we go. I think the fact that this is light lined is something I find really attractive. Mm -hmm. Everything I do next is going to be more on the corner. So I'm going to get a little more of the black on my brush. I'm going to work it in. Boom, boom. A little more of the brown. Boom, boom, boom. How that brown warms that shadow. This street is quite warm. And when I say warm, what I'm saying is that the colors are closer to the reds and yellows on a color wheel than the blues and greens and purple. That's all I'm saying. When we artists talk about these things, we're not being, we're not being all fussy. We're just dialoguing about art stuff. All right, here we go. I have a nice gray, and I'm going to come here. Using my reference, I'm going to make some little shadows while everything's still wet and soft, because shadows can be quite soft. I'm even going to just use the corner of my brush. Not even change brushes out. So I'm just using my corner. You could use a bigger bright or a smaller bright or a round. It's really not that critical. And I'm just going to come in from the right-hand side. I'll stroke out a few little shadows. Let's put one right here, just back and forth with our brush. See, I'm doing these soft strokes. I'm coming from the left-hand side, now going right, making little dashes. And this is going to leave us feeling like the street, a little more paint on my brush, is well shadowed. I'm going to move this over here. <laughs> and John's going to leave yours up, but I'll use this here. For I'm not trying to completely act like duplicate everything. I'm just trying to give that feeling of dappled light. That's what I'm doing. The corner of the brush, real soft. Dappling, dappling, dappling this light. That's what we're doing. Now it's a little darker up front here. If I need to put a little white water on my brush and work it through to improve flow, I do that. There we go. See how that improved the flow of the brush? Yeah, it really does. Just working a nice soft brush. Not trying to be super, this is painterly. We're not trying to get tight. So some landscape artists uh, get very tight. What does that mean? That means that they get very detail oriented and their brush strokes are very neat and tidy and everything has a place and a meaning. That's one way of doing it. Great way of doing it. Great way of doing it. Another great way of doing it is just to be, to catch like a poem, to catch the top notes of it, to catch the feeling of it, the soul of it, but be a little bit loose in our interpretation. Leaving room for the viewer to put themselves in the painting a little bit. That's why sometimes I like things when they're more painterly. I'm going to brush a slightly stronger little shadow over here. Okay, so already we have kind of a light line street. I'm going to rinse out. 
thought I brought a bunch of cat's tongues over here, but I'll grab one of my cat's tongues. This is a number four cat's tongue. And I'm going to get some just white on it. And I'll pick up a little of that gray and work it in, but I want this to feel like the sunlight coming down. And right here, the back here, let's brush a little bit of this very soft gray a couple places. And then you can actually add these as hot spots, right, in the shadows. The hot spots where light has filtered through the trees. Light. Light mm -hmm. has filtered through the trees. Get a little more brown on there. I am not using any yellows to even warm this up. I'm actually using the brown to warm it up. I like to think of light trickling through the trees. Does it trickle through the trees? Just the little, the little photons bouncing down. Little photons mm -hmm. bouncing down. So he's got the uh, Carl Sagan version of light going through the trees. And that also works because there's not a right or wrong about how you're seeing this, right? Let's put a couple right here. Let's go. Let's put a little reflection there. And one over here on the right. Make a nice little shape here. And, and this is the puzzle that we might be having, right, of light. We could make a nice strong version of light just dashing through here. Isn't this fun? I think it's fun. But I am a weird goof, and so this is what I like to do on the weekend. <laughs> but is, you have hey, all of us with you. And drag a bunch goofy. of people into it. I'm, I'm a know. paint enabler. We are, we are 500 weirdos strong. <laughs> that is fantastic. Cinnamon, Cinnamon doesn't have access to the chat, so she doesn't get to see. So uh, it's Because what it, happens is you might have noticed I'm a talker, and I'll just stop teaching. And I'll talk she to does. She's just, just like. All of you guys are coming to me to come. We'll figure it out. Oh, it's real. Yeah. That girl is real. She's a better community, and she is real. All right. So you can see that we've got. Let's back up. I think we've got a nice dappled little street. I love it. I can now pull this up. And what I have Ooh. is a beautiful set of lines that I can work from on my street. No, but you got, there's little, there's spray over there on That's the other okay. side. That's okay. I'm painting all that in. That's, that won't hurt I anything? just needed my road to work. <laughs> It'll be okay then, huh? It'll be okay then. Another thing I'm going to do while I'm here, while I'm here, is I'm going to come back here with a little bit of my blue and I'm going to get some more white into it. And I'm going to make a slightly lighter value of that. And back here, I'm going to just very carefully make sure that this little part of my tunnel in the back, because I really, you could have it end in the building like it does in the reference, but don't really want to. So I'm not going to. But you, you know, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> you do you. I'm going to do me. It'll all work out. Now, I'm going to actually freehand in my curb. The curb will be almost the thickness of the tape that I had, and then it's going to bisect into this as it vanishes. And it's going to be in a shadow. So I'm going to get a little of my brown and a little of my black, and I'm going to mix them together again with my cat's tongue. And I'm going to make a slightly darker color than what I had on my dark part of the street. Oh, perfect. And I'm going to come right here. Make sure you've got nice moisture on your brush so that the paint can flow off, but not so much that it's dripping or underbinding. And underbinding just means that it's not sticking to itself or the canvas. So I'm going to just make sure that I create a nice little herb, right? We can put little plants or things over it. It's just going to create a little shadow by which we can go, oh, that's in shadow. And that's foreshortened. That's a mark. You can say, draw, 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 draw. Last one. You remember that dog? Having fun with art as a kid. Getting excited about perspective. So see how I'm just widening this stroke? I like the light at the end of the cherry tree tunnel. There needs to be a light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm a big advocate of really thinking about what you have on the wall and making sure that you're putting images there that not only speak to you deeply, but also lift you up and help you focus on the life you want to be living, not focusing on the life that you, you're lamenting living. 
if that makes uh, sense. If, if your paintings start to speak to you, you should. <laughs> that probably shouldn't be happening. It's, it's not. Let's not, not do that. That's, You're such a pinky. They can inspire you. So there was a lot of discussion about the reds and the yellows in this painting. I'm going to put out my alizarin crimson. So what you're going to be looking for in this, there's not really a hard and fast rule about the pinks and reds that you're using. I'm using a deep, dark red, a blood style red. I'm also using a quinacridone magenta, which is a warm pink red. Can you, see, you can see the differences. Nope, I'm going to move can't. that. Yeah, I'm going to move it. I'm, I, I was just, just noticing that. Don't worry. Okay. So I've got that there. I'm also going to stick out some Indian yellow, which is one of my favorite yellows. But you could use any of the yellows you have. This is my, you could use a yellow deep. Right? You could use a uh, cad yellow deep. You could just use a cad yellow. There's not a hard and fast rule about what this has to be. So don't put a lot of pressure. What? What? Okay, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself about this. I also gave myself as a treat this dark Prussian blue. You could just keep working with the phthalo blue and not worry about adding the Prussian. Sorry, did I surprise you? I would, however, I like the yellow ochre. Yes, you did. You always surprise me. I like my yellow ochre. And of course, I've got some phthalo green and some burnt sienna because we've got all kinds of different woods and barks and things that happen in here. And I can That's put right. you can go pair. phthalo green. And oh, I just didn't know where we were. Okay, I see, where you, I see what you got. And I'm going to put out some of my sienna. I like my two browns. This brown is quite red, actually. And for a long time was considered a red in painting. So if you're like, that's a really reddish brown. And yes, it totally is. That's completely accurate. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do, I have a nice big round fluffy brush. This is a number 12 Cambridge. Just get your uh, whatever brush you like to use that's bigger and rounder and will let you scumble. I'm going to get it wet and drag off the extra. All right, and I'll go ahead and load up my brush with some white. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm pulling the, the white in and I'm going back and forth. It's working it into the brush. And that is going to let me go right into this pink here. See how I'm doing? And I might even grab just a little of that alizarin into that mixture to catch my cherry blossom color. And here, I'm going to start putting in just a distant little bit of, this is going to be the leaves behind the trees. You got to have a bunch of leaves behind the trees, right? So as your trees are doing this, your trees are going to, I'll help you. This, oh, the oh, right. tape. Visualize. <laughs> the trees are essentially doing this number I know. Okay? So we need to have a bunch of this above that. <laughs> On wow. both sides, actually. They've, everybody's loving the washi tape. It helps. Yeah. Well, and these trees are even more imperfective. And I'll just do this because I... We're gonna just hang in with the trunks, and and you know, I will say that I, you know, everyone is saying that, that we do agree that that paintings are th these are really a cool tunnel tree, and yeah, this is looking really really awesome. It's gonna be, I think, it's like one of those things like my girl with the water. It's, it feels so hard to do, and then when you get into doing it, you're like, wait, I can tunnel all the trees. The, yeah, the I can mine all the oaks. I can paint. Angelville, but you can, for those of you who watch Preacher. It's a very dark show. It's not family friendly. <laughs> but I like the comic, and I was already a fan, and I'm stuck, and I love tulips, so that's the deal. But I'm th just making little brushes, if you see, of pink using my round brush's shape. This it's is a really soft, dry brush sense of pink stuff. I want to make sure that lots of my sky is maybe going through all of this, right? This is a really big brush. Yes, it is a very big brush. I was, I mean, that's what I was. You don't have sure. to have a brush this big though to make this painting work. That is not a requirement. No, I am just... taking advantage of this big brush because it's going to cover a lot of my canvas very quickly. I was just noticing how how it, like gives a really detailed tip though. I was yeah. Kind of... Well, this particular brush is a mix of hogs uh, bristles and synthetic filaments that are best dressed, and they're actually designed to curve in and make a good tip. Now, every once in a while, I'm going to need to dip in water, and I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to reload. See how I'm reloading? Get a little white. Boom, 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 boom. A little pink. Boom, 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 boom. And if your, br if your paintbrush is, ooh, that's a lot of that. That's okay. 
if your paintbrush is drying out real quick, a trick you can do is there's this stuff called Gloss Glazing Liquid by Golden. If you've never painted before, my big uh, bummer warning to you is, guess what? Sometimes stuff says glazing liquid and it does a completely different thing. So what this one does is it slows down the drying time of the paint, allows for blending and glazing all in one. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And I'm just going to come here and this will help keep my, my brush from drying out too quick. I might get just a little more of the red and pink into it, just a little bit deeper. So I can pull up light colors. That's what we're doing. Coming along, just going paint, paint, paint. And I'm going to just make these little soft marks. You know, you can you can bring them around different places. You can change the brush directionality. Otherwise, you'll end up like if you all, all if you go all right to left, it'll feel like the, the trees are bluing. Mm. And I can do that. I can get so into a groove. I'll be like, you know, I think I'm just going to go all right to left. And then I'm like, oh, look, the trees are blowing. And then the trick as an artist is you go, I meant it. <laughs> just always mean what you do. Don't volunteer that you think you messed up. Don't. Just be like, I meant it. Only talk to your peers candidly about what you've got going on in your painting. <laughs> People that get what it is to paint. When you're talking to like, you know, your non-painting friends and family, be like, no, no, it's meant to be that way. It symbolizes the man's struggle against, I don't know, machinery. Just say something crazy. People will nope out and leave you alone. Not only do you get painting instruction, you get survival tips that really, really work. You can just see I'm just getting a nice little bunch of pink that's loosely brushed out there that's going to be my distant trees, right? I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to get a little more pink, 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 a little more of the deep red. It just makes a nice color. If you just have one, don't panic. Do the painting anyway. Do, do not panic. Do, don't panic. Just do the painting anyways. And I'm going to try not to make a harsh line at um, this space because I know I'm going to have to bring some of these leaves down. This is just some pre-work that we know we need to have as we are doing the trees. We're going to also put a bunch of little weird fiddly little branches in here, but they're not going to be hard for us. I'm going to talk to you about how to get these lovely lines. Somebody asked me, can I use a Posca paint pen? Sure. That's what you like. Some artists mix up uh, non-oil-based colored pencils. Acrylic. Uh, you can't paint acrylic over uh, oil, but you can paint oil over acrylic. So if you're a good oil artist and you're like, how can acrylic make my life better? That would be how. Because you can get all that hard underpainting work done and dry and then do all your beautiful blending with your oils. I'm going to keep this sort of pink stronger over here. There's a little spot that just is really pinked up and there's barely any blue showing through. And now I'm going to move my tape, you know, because I don't want to have completely hard lines. And I'm going to just soften this and bring some of this down into this space. Also coming down our tree lined area, right? So that there's some. We don't want it to look like, wait, did the trees just, what'd they do? And we'll be like, no, they totally grew here. It's okay. Don't worry, baby. All right. And I'm just softening that line. And you can see it's quite light. It's quite soft. I haven't gone and reloaded. Isn't that fun? Yes. And my rinse out, super du duper 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 good. And, and for the purposes of having bright color, I may actually even switch brushes here. But I want a similar brush stroke. So I guess I'll get my ruby satin round number 12. I have a whole bunch of round number 12 is what the deal is. You're like, where are all these number 12s coming from? It's that. I'm going to get the Indian yellow all in my brush. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to grab some of this glazing medium so it's not drying out on me. Get a smidge of the green. There you go. Smidge of the green. And if I get a little bit of the white, I'm really going to see this color. There we go. Because these have a bright green in them, don't they? In the leaves. I felt. All right, let's put in some green leaves. Just tap the little brush here and there all around here at first. I'm tapping little spots, just the tip. Here I have this giant brush and I'm tapping just the tip with this little, <laughs> but that's how I do. Do, 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 do. 
You can get a little white on there if you want to have some lighter leaves. Get a little more yellow if you want some more yellow. You can vary up the color. You are not trapped. But what you do want to do is make sure that you have little pops of green in this tree tunnel. People are going to think that you just completely like painted every little leaf. You're going to be like, no. Actually, let them think you did. Be like, yes, everyone painted all of them. Took forever. How long did that take you? A hundred hours. <laughs> be like Scotty on Star Trek. hundred hours, Captain. Can you do me this painting like by Tuesday? No, that painting takes a hundred hours. A hundred hours. I'll pay you materials. Yeah, materials are going to be 500 bucks. <laughs> That's how you handle family. Just kidding. I've never done that to my family. Silliness. Be silly. But no, actually do that. Just when people, like, when you have somebody you know you have to give a painting to because you have some sort of social arrangement that means you have to deliver art and all they're going to offer you is, like, the materials, like, the cost of materials. Qu quote them, like, three times the time that you think it's going to take you and, and, and triple your materials so you make some money. Don't let them go buy your materials for you. You go. They can get you a gift card. Get, <laughs> get, you, get, get the ones you want. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Survival tips. All right. So when I have that basis in, I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse this brush out. Right? Then I can take one of my small detail brushes and I can paint in some detail uh, little twiggly branches. And so I can even grab like one of my small, small, small number two filberts and I can mix some black and brown together easily 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 and I don't want to paint every twig I see I just want to paint enough of them so that when I start layering trees there's some twigs in the in the in the tree so I might come up here and paint like oh a little bit and this doesn't mean we're not we're all done with all these beautiful flowers these are just our first layer talk about the way that our trees right, are building up together okay. yeah they so we're just inter we're giving it a conversation they kind of reach over the top yeah just a few little bits that that make it feel another little trick i can do is you can one of the fun things, I have my weird wandering ones, but a lot of people have success with this style of twig where they do the bow out. Not all trees are like that, but depending on where you're at with your twigs, there's different ways to get them in. Don't feel like there's just one. A lot of times people will try to make you uh, embrace the idea that there is one kind of way and there really isn't. Just make sure we've got just a little bit of the branches just here. These ones far away, they should be quite light, quite delicate. And they will kind of merge together here in the center of the tunnel. So you can just do this. You've got big, big trees you're going to be building up as you go. So these are just, these are the ones that are far back. You can be talking about just a little bit here and there. A little bit of branches here and there and everywhere. I like branches. Branches are cool, man. That's They're made for climbing. The, some of these are a little twiggly and are not made for climbing. Don't climb the twiggly branches, says Winnie the Pooh. But if you're a squirrel or a sparrow or maybe a beaver. Have a hoppity hop. Or a, a nimble gnome. A nimble gnome might climb the branches. I'm just trying to put a few here and you can see that what I'm doing is I'm just weaving them together it's not every branch I'm not going to paint every branch we see here because that's going to make this just crazy and busy isn't it it would be very busy too busy too too much too much guys too much just a few is okay what we talk about Uh, 
And a lot of that can get painted out, but they're very light little bits, aren't they? Just the beginnings of a tree tunnel. The beginning of a tree tunnel. Now, the other little thing that I have going down here is a really fabulous little bit of green. So I can take a little of my, I've got my number 12 brush again in my green, and I can just, I'm going to be um, lightening it, but this way I can start talking about it. Now, Which brush are you using there? This is, again, the number 12 ruby satin silver round. I'm just using a big okay. fat round. I'm using my big fat brush. And I'm just sort of wiggling it around, and as I come here, you can see that I'm just doing the same thing. It's wider here, and it vanishes here. Now, Mary... Hi, Mary! She asked a question, right? Sandy has a good follow-up there. Um, so, uh, where do you go? Mary, why do the small? Why are you painting the small branches before painting the big branches or the larger trunk? Well, a lot of it's going to be covered, and if we don't paint these in first, we won't be able to layer them in. Gotcha. That's and, all we're doing. We're just getting our layers, and we're painting our furthest objects back, and then we're building forward. And Sandy wants to know, how do you know what direction to make those little twiggly bits? Well, I use my reference photo. I look and I find areas that I think are interesting, and I paint some of what I see. If I painted everything I'd see, I'd be about 200 hours in this painting. Yeah. Right? So that would be being tight. But I'm being painterly, so I'm going to paint some of what I see, some of how I feel about it. Not all of it. Neither method is more right than the other method. Is it safe to say you're implying some of it's these thoughts? It's super safe. Boy, you got such a good grade with Mr. Tally, didn't you? Yes, safe to say that we are implying. What if, now April would like to know, <laughs> what if we don't have a round brush? Then use a braid, a big braid. What you want to use is a brush that isn't making you work for every stroke. If I used a really teeny tiny brush, if I tried to paint this whole painting with this, with <laughs> with this that brush, I, would, I could do it. I could paint this whole painting with this little brush, but I'd be here a while. Yeah. Now, you could That's paint this. That's all it is. I'm just, I'm just making short work of a lot of stuff. Yeah, now, you could paint this with a stick, yeah. but it would take a long time. And, and you can easily paint this with a bright. Yeah. So see how I've got this sort of, I am building this dark value right there. And again, it's we're still talking about that foreshortening. Now we have some distant, distant stuff that we've got to talk about a little bit. So I'm going to get my brush all loaded up with my Indian yellow and a little of my green. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Quite bright, quite bright. You can even add a little of your ochre to it. And some white. See how what a bright green that is? We can come back here, and there were some just distant little trees, wasn't there? There is. That we see, and we're going to pull these in here. Also paying deep attention. Of our glazing medium out. My studio is quite dry today, so i got to keep the medium out. And I'm just going to be like this. I'm going to just softly paint this. Now, I feel like these lines are so hard, I'm going to actually come back with my other brush. This is a fun trick if you've never done this. And I'm going to just soften using my dry brush this area so it's not such a hard line. Look at that. That's crazy. Isn't that fun? To soften it out like a blush brush. See? You scumble it. Scumbly softened it. There's a little bit of this right here, but not so much. But I'll, I'll talk about some of this being here as we're going forward. And it definitely be softened as well. Look at that. Look at the soft. These are soft, distant things that we are not seeing particularly well. They're, they're in the distance. You can even put a little bit of soft, soft, soft greenery here. Soft. Rinse out really well. Both brushes. Super rinse. You could do this with a fan. You could do this with a bright. I'll do the next run if you guys want with like a big bright. Or... It's all really good. Actually, I kind of like it right here. Yeah? We're done? We're good? You want to I... microwave my coffee? Sure, but I mean, like, actually, I kind of like how it just sort of mystically disappears into this. I know it's not complete, but I actually kind of like it. Hopefully, you get paintings where the stages are pleasing to you. Oh, thank you for getting my coffee. So, yeah, um, a lot of times there isn't like, there's a lot of ways to construct an image. And a lot of artists develop strategies 
to get through these images and then um and then we share them with you guys and i think the the challenge or the pitfall for the student is to feel that one teacher is more right than another teacher and there is a right and a wrong way to get a painting in instead of just there's a lot of ways to get a painting in and there's a lot of medias to do it with and one media isn't better than another media or one media isn't easier than another media like oils aren't easier than acrylic they're different than acrylic watercolors aren't easier or harder than acrylic they're just different than acrylic so pencil same thing digital Come on, guys, digital art is awesome, and it's not easier than traditional media. It's just different. There are things that are similar, and there are things that that media is different than. So as artists and as teachers, as we're expressing how you might accomplish a painting, we have our strategies that we've garnered over the years. I certainly have garnered a few in my life. And I have a way of getting in artwork. If you've painted with me for a while, you're kind of getting a sense of the ways. I have a multitude of ways that I do it, but you might probably have a sense of how I do it. I can't tell you how much Cinnamon has gardened in our remarriage. She's got a really green thumb. She's a very good gardener. What are you talking about? I don't know oh, what you mean. You said garnered. I thought garnered. you said gardener. No, I have garden gardens. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> that Mellage. is mostly pretty darn fun and i can't i can't deny the truth of it all right <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna look at some angle brushes if you haven't played with angle brushes they're really fantastic and fun to paint trees with and i've got uh three different little angle brushes here i've got a five eighths inch i've got a half inch and i got a three quarter inch by the way anything i'm doing with an angle brush you could probably do with a number eight or number six right i just like the way the angles taper a stroke and i'm going to get my smaller angle and i i mean i have teeny tiny angles look they go all the way down to three eighths inch on me i like my angle brushes and i have an even smaller angle brush which we may get into but for right now let's let's just paint some trees in so in the distant trees i'm going to get a little of my brown and a little of my black right together and down here I'm going to just pop in a little trunk here, just a little something. And I'm just using the edge of my brush. I'm just using the tip of it. I'm just talking about some branches that are going up in this little fellow. And it has a little friend over here, similar deal. Put in a little trunk so i just stroke from the left to the right i kind of build a little trunk here and i can just come up here and talk a bit about a few branches that could be going places some that could be a little thicker now we're just putting that in i see yeah just putting that little guy in oh yeah you don't got to get all of them though no sorry bob now, I'm going to come and I'm going to get a little of maybe my ochre into my brush and some white. And it makes kind of this warm highlight that hopefully you guys can see. And I'll go ahead and just tap in a little oh. of that warm highlight. And that's almost like it makes like the, the rough bark too. So that really saved me a lot of, a lot of any problems, right? Beth says that... Uh... She she tried the um the same paint, the the level three. Uh huh. And she said she she likes it too. Yeah, you know, man, I don't know what to say. It's been good. Yeah. <laughs> it's been good. We all know the golden's fantastic. We know the Holbein's fantastic. We know there are fantastic colors out there in acrylic. There's a new contender. But yeah, I have to say it's it's in my paint box, like for real. <laughs> you know, so these things happen. I'm going to get a little bright now. I'm going to get like a, let's get a little Cambridge bright for these distant little leaves. This is a number two Cambridge bright. We could paint this whole thing with one brush, but why would we do that? Um, actually, because it's a lot harder than people think. <laughs> come by. You should have painted that with one brush. Yes, I can paint it with one brush, but that's not fun for new people. I don't know what to tell you. They don't enjoy that. They don't go, look, I painted this whole thing with the house brush. They're not like, they're like, it's not working. 
<laughs> Teresa says that that pink is angry with boxing gloves. Is it? <laughs> I thought that's awesome. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's a good pink. I'm just gonna tap in some stronger little pink here. Tap it in, tap it in, and a little thicker too. I think that's an important thing. A little thicker, stronger little pink, going a little thicker. Impasto pink. A little more impasto. Just another little layer of what we've got going on. You can put a little bit right there. Look, I'm gonna enjoy this. And you're you're really reaching out there on the uh, towards that the brush or? Oh, like I'm far back on the brush. Yeah. Yeah, you can be right here. And if you're sitting at a table or you're in a space, you may be holding. As long as you're not cramping your hands, you're okay. There's a lot of feeling in the art world about the appropriate way to hold a brush or paint. Or blah, 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 blah. And I don't mean to be disrespectful by blah, 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 blah. But I just couldn't possibly say all there is to have be said about that. And I'll say um, in some instances, it's true. Absolutely true. Absolutely accurate. Absolutely factual. But sometimes it's only true in conditions, like maybe you have mobility conditions, and so that wouldn't even be true for you at all. You would have to find another way through. So art is about finding a way through. These little dashing marks that I'm making, right, that I've got going on, these are all about just kind of getting that texture that we're feeling in this beautiful, this beautiful reference. And isn't it going pop, pop, pop? Yeah. And now that distant soft pink has, like, got some real space, doesn't it? Now, Neil was just asking here, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the zooming camera. You're having the branches and the trunk kind of arc over the top to imply a tunnel, yeah? Yes. I'm pulling them together in that way to sort of say tunnel in some places, and then I'll have some of them go up. But putting in that early work is going to really help our eyes see that tunnel coming down. Because if you really think about it, what I have is perspective lines that are going to this one point. Nothing is as fun as a one point perspective. Mm -hmm. They're really fun. Except for a 10 perspective. That's painting. not a thing, and it's not fun. Just stop <laughs> it. All right. See, when I've been married a long time, and you can tell. There's like, I like when people don't seem to know. They're like, who's that guy? Who's the guy who's heckling you? <laughs> Just like, like that. Well, I'm not saying he's not, but well, I married him, so I brought it all myself. true. Actually, before I get this next layer on, I'm feeling a thing I want to do. Okay, what's it? Very strong. I'm going to get some of that bright green that I have. What kind of brush did you grab there? I'm back into that Cambridge uh, number two. Okay. Just a nice square bright, and I'm going to get a little of my my little white here. I'm just making a kind of little space because I really like this little bit of bush that was right here. Ah, the shrubbery. And then maybe its friend is a little darker, if you see, and then I'm, so I'm going to definitely be like, hey, 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 up the tree a little bit. And just sort of a, a, of that, because I think that that layer is also really going to add to what's happening in our street. And I might get a darker green into that. I see some darker green down here. So let's darken down low. Darken it down low. And if you're having trouble getting it dark, just mix some brown into that green and look at that go. Oh, yeah. And I can even add a little of that there. Look at that. Fun. Fun. Fun, 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 fun. It's fun to paint. Oh, no, softly. Look, I can go softly, softly, softly. Something afoot there. All right. So once I have that in, I can come in and talk about, like, maybe another tree. And it could be, like, right here. And here it comes up. Let's, uh, let's give the trunk a little thought, a little thicker, maybe. thought that hue over there we're at it again now bonnie was asking do you like long handles better than short handles or do you have a preference well when i was doing a lot of work at a table i had a very strong preference um, and actually at the time i came on the platform i was doing a lot of work at a table so i really like short handles and was not enjoying long handles but that's because i'm sitting down but as i work at the easel i always prefer long handles because it lets me back up from the canvas if you're sitting at a table, kitchen table, in a bed, you got like, um, um, you may have to change this for mobility issues, but I think what I'm, the feedback I've been getting is that the shorter handles also work better with adaptive devices. So really, you've got to look at these tools and go, this is about my time. 
in my good experience, and I don't like to poke my eye, so I'm going to get the short handle version of that ruby satin. Um, a lot of people were surprised that I shout out the other brushes that aren't in my line, but I'm just like, look, there's a lot of cool tools out there. I'm not going to be like, no, you're not allowed to know about anything else <laughs> that might help you in your journey because I got some things I'm selling now. No. And I am proud of what I what we make and what I sell, and I'm proud of this brush company. So I'll tell you about the different things that they make that might help you along the way. I'm going to come on this side and make another little tree. He's going to kind of come back maybe. And I like this sort of rough tree. I'm like using the roughness of the brush to sort of trunk out the tree. Trunk it out. Oh. All right. So I'm just getting that. That's real nice. I'm happy with that. And once those little fellows are in, you may have already guessed, I get to get my, maybe my yellow ochre and a little of this dark color and some white. And that's going to make a nice little highlight there. I'm going to come right here. And I'm just going to highlight the front part of the tree. So I'm highlighting down the center of the tunnel. And this is going to accentuate that there's a light. There's a light over at the Frankenstein place. That's right, there is a light. But this is going to be just, I think we got some mail or somebody at the front door or something. <laughs> I heard the beep. So I don't know where we're at on the painting. And, uh, oh no. Hi, honey. My daughter, my 13 year old, she's running the switcher. Everybody say hi to honey. Look at you. You got to go up front. Help daddy. Oh my goodness, this is exciting. You ready, honey? All right, so I'm going to get back into my number two. I'm going to rinse this out. That's right, honey, I'm going to the palette. And we're going to get some more of our pink. We're going to get a little bit of our white and some more of our pink. Everybody's going to full on clap for honey because she rocked that. Wow, way to come in and help dad. I'm into it. You did good, sweetheart. I'm proud of you. That's as scary as it was for me. <laughs> really no she did amazing she's fantastic i'm so proud of her that that freaked me out the one time i had to help like help you with stuff i was like tripping i'm just getting my pink on here and i'm just gonna you know i'm gonna continue to talk about some of the stuff right that i've got you like maybe a little bit here i'm gonna take some of that right in front of that tree isn't that fun And you can see I'm sort of pulling some of this out. It's going to help really tell this story. But I do want to leave that blue sky showing through. Rinse, 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 rinse. Now it's time to find my green. Let's get some dark green. In here. Dark green, which is my burnt umber and my... Um, Your burnt. Green, they look green. There you go. Yep. There I go. I'm going to add some little grasses. You know, let's, let's put some, maybe something tall right here that comes in and, and is down low. And then let's get our, our yellow into it and a little of our white into it to make a very light poppy green. And let's not only add some green down low, let's add a little bit up top in the trees, but just a smidge. Okay, guys, just a smidge. Just a little kiss of the greenery that could be in the tree around. See how I'm doing that super lightly? This little brush. It's a very scuffly little brush. It's my friend. She's my friend. Your brush is your friend. Go ahead, like every once in a while too, and take a little bit of the grass or something down over the front of the, the walk. It'll be so charming when you do. And you're charming, aren't you? I like this. It's a, it's a charming little tunnel of... It's charming... Happy little tunnel of trees. Trees. Don't you wish you lived on this street? They're I just, do. They're huggy trees. Huggy, huggy, huggy trees. Sorry, I don't know why I do the things that I do. I do. Do you know? Do you know where I went to? Do you like the things that life's been showing you? Do you know where? Next trees. 
So it, when you look at the traceable, if you're using the traceable, and I might start getting a little bit of my burnt umber into this, um, or, uh, sienna into this as I come forward, just warm it up a bit, change the, the, the value sets and stuff. You're going to be like, oh, wow, like there is a little bit of the tree, you know, like a little bit of the background will peek through. Right? I'm going to go ahead and chunk out, use that, use that brush to sort of chunk out that tree. So rough, isn't it? Yeah. But maybe this one has a nice big branch that's Ooh. gonna come up. And this keeps us from getting lost in all the minutiae because I don't know about you, I am dyslexic. And so things like roses, certain um patterns will start to throw me. And that can make my painting journey very challenging for me. I bring a little branch over here. Now you can see that there was a lot of branches that maybe, you know, were happening that we just didn't go into, right? Easy to get them in, but you got to layer them. That way they're layered on the paint appropriately. See how we're doing? Do, do, do. Hopefully, everybody really loves this and everybody's painting tree tunnels. I can't wait to see all of them in group. Let's make this little friend. We like to make the little friends next next to it, right? This one is maybe a little bit smaller. And let's um take that one up a bit. we're not painting the whole tree are we because we know a lot of the trees are hidden by the tree that's next to them by the tree that's next to them by the tree that's next to them as they come forward they're getting a little darker a little richer a little bigger taller all those things a little branch right here that one can come like that oh that's interesting isn't it Branchy, 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 branchy. Happy little trees in the tunnels. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the rust and my burnt sienna and my yellow. And I'll mix it into this. And you can see I'm adding my dark tree mix into that. But it creates a lighter color. I will just a smidge of my white into it. Talk about the highlight. And I can come right here and I can just see how I'm doing this dash stroke. I'm just using the the angle to create the bark. But if I have to highlight the front of that, I can easily do it. So I need to dip in my water, and I may need a fresh water. Whenever you're doing a lot of browns and blacks, you may find you have to do fresh water much more often than usual. Now, are you using fluid paint to do the branches? No, I am not going to use any fluid paint in today. Um, somebody brought up the point that they felt like they had to. I was like, no, I mean, it's like an option. It can make things easier for you as a new painter, but you don't have to. You're not trapped. So I was like, oh, I'll, let me show you. So, all right, that looks pretty good. Those little fellows are nice. Now, I might get a little bit of my yellow ochre and my white and just make sure that there's a little bit of this in the front that's just kind of bright. See how I'm doing? Really lit. Because I want to exaggerate some of that. Not all of it, just some of it. One, two, three, four. And we may not do all the trees. <laughs> Maybe like, that's enough tree. <laughs> all right, let's get our greens going again, right? We're pretty familiar. What's the deal? A little, little brown and a little, little burnt umber, and we're going to plant some stuff. Could have something happening back here, some sort of little bushes or hedges. Quite dark, quite thoughtful. Coming down right here, right? Right over that curb. Right over that curb. Get a little of my Indian yellow in there, and a little of my white. I'm 
just pick up some highlights in this greenery. This friend could be more of that brighter greenery. Maybe some green up the back of the tree. See how we're doing? Rinse out. I'm going to put out a little more white. And I'm going to get rid of this crazy tape. The tape is everywhere. You, you know that tape is, it's, it's almost triple cute. Is it almost triple cute? <laughs> Just because what I will say is that there are little balls of tape all over the studio. <laughs> Can we run a little AC? I know it makes some we, background oh noise, yeah. babe, but Actually, I am hot as all get out. Not a problem. It is a little, it is a little warmer in yeah, here. Yeah, it's just a hot day today, I think, in Houston is what it is. I'm going to make some very bright spots. Can you see the little bright spots out here on the screen? And I'm going to really make sure that I've got some bright green. More, more of that sort of saturated green that can happen and... Maybe put some even here too. You know, talking about there's these different greens that go on, right? We have so many greens, and what we what we try to do is remember that the light is in that center area, and so we just try to light the front of things as we're building forward. I am gonna just totally add some more of these cute little dotty dots. So let's get a little bit of our pink, maybe a little of our alizarin. Definitely some of our white. Just. That's great. I like that. Is that that's, fun? That's kickboxing pink. It is. It just That's why I like Quinn. There's other pinks. Could have done this with a myriad of beautiful colors across the paint box. I just tested all 36 colors of the Artist Loft. There was a lot of pinks in there that would work here. I just didn't want to make you have to go out and buy a bunch of pink. But I will at some point, so get ready. Because mm -hmm. there were some cool colors. But the point is, is that a, there's just a lot of ways to paint a painting. That's and, great. And maybe your way is the way you need to paint the painting. Now, G was asking, this is, a, this is like a three hoot? No, this is two hoot. It's just a... It's just a little longer. Just a little longer, okay. More yeah. layers. More layers, but it's not a three hoot. Um, more than and a it, one. You know what? Here's but... the good news, though. So all the time people be like, I heard your rating and I super disagree. And, okay, so, like, it's not that I like to be argued with because I'm like every other human being. Nobody likes to be argued with. But that said, we did add a rating system that you guys can come. So, like, say I say it's two hoot and you guys are like, it's three. You can come after and re-rate it yep. for the next person and upload your painting and tell your story. So the other students knowing it are they're understanding that beginner experience because I recognize that in a classroom I could be like, this is a two hoot. And then with you, I might be like, oh, let's elevate it to a three hoot, right? But I don't really know until the paintings come in. Like there were things that I was sure were going to be one hoot that just rolled everybody. And there were things that I was sure were going to be a three hoot that everyone was like, got it, nailed it, totally get the concept. So that conversation that is something that I think that we're really lucky to have. So if you have time and you'd like to go by theartsherpa.com and rate your experience on this, that's cool. Yeah. I'm going to just make sure that I'm adding I'll see if I can get a hoot meter even pulled up here for us a little bit. Oh, it's such a cute thing because there's little owls. Like, I'll say, like, if you see two owls, that means I feel like it was two hoots. But you might be like, three, three. <laughs> And the reason we didn't use a red color on the meter is because I didn't want people to think of it as a stop point. I didn't want them to be stopped by the perceived difficulty of a painting. I just wanted them to know what to expect when they get into it. And really, when you're talking about two hoot or three hoot, I'm talking about how difficult it is for you to get the colors, how difficult it is for you to execute the techniques, um, and then also the amount of time it might take you to paint it. So lots, lots of factors go into my feelings on that as a teacher. That doesn't mean that you guys don't have your own factors. Right. That's true. going to make sure. I'm just making sure I'm bringing some of this through. Like you do all around. So that these trees exist in real space with real leaves. Because you know we're kind of hopping through this. 
hop, 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 and hop, and hop, 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 and hop, and when is my bubble blower getting hooked back up? You know, we were just talking about that. It's in the, the gnomes have it in the Sherpa works. <laughs> just, it's, it's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. Well, they were doing a little bit of upgrades to it because... Uh, the new studio. It Yeah, it needed some servicing. So, which we're hiding from you. <laughs> but I'm much less know. likely to die from my lighting now. <laughs> well, I, you weren't going to die from your lighting before. Maybe. <sighs> Possibly. I don't think. But it's much better now. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get my yellow ochre and my burnt umber. I'm not my yellow ochre. My burnt sienna and my burnt umber together and a little bit of my black. As I'm coming forward, you can go ahead and darken some of this. I might even add some of my Prussian blue. You don't have to add it. When I say you don't have to have every color in the paint box, I genuinely mean you don't have to have every color in the paint box. Oops, there you are down there. All right, I'm gonna just bring this here. You what? Me? I thought you were someplace else. Was I? I thought you were doing branches up top. So, oh, no, no, no. This thing is just all good. Last little tree before I put my last tree in. I'm just putting in a little fellow. Put in that little fellow. I just like to, you know, have things going on. So interesting to me to see how trees are built. Isn't it interesting? And again, I am indulging in these colors, but you, I always try to tell you if you don't actually have to like, to get the painting, you may not always need everything. I try to introduce you to things that can make your experience easier, but also let you know when you've got options and you don't have to run out. weird kind of and you can see how this layering then creates the sense of the tree tunnel being layered yeah what is going on with the shirt <laughs> can't wear a shirt don't have fashion blog for a reason actually everybody has been saying they love your shirt really? and your earrings and your hair and they want to know whether you get them and they're like what are you going to tell us more about that uh, awesome peacock shirt there Thank you. I think this was um, from the mall. <laughs> I don't remember which door. Let me think. Let me think. That's such a that's such a. It was a while ago. Answer. This shirt. It's like uh, that Palais Royal. Mall. And all the Palais Royal people went. Oh, yeah, it's a Palais Royal shirt. Took me a minute. I am not a fashionista, but I will tell you where stuff comes from. I mean, I like clothes and I like art. Not just I don't want to. Just building a little trunk right here, like you do. So, Jess just asked if we had Hi, any Jess. butterfly paintings. A uh, few. I would have to say I just dropped a link there in uh, it, to our to our search engine on the website, and I think uh, I don't know what got. We got a couple out there. I think that there's a yeah. It, six, it, you know what? Dozen, eight, the so. the website actually. There's so many paintings. I think there's like seven hundred now. That's uh, crazy. So it's easier almost sometimes to say what I don't have a painting of yet. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't have a llama. Hmm. It's true. I have no llama drama yet. Um, get there's some certain things I haven't really done yet. And uh, so, you know, that, that's a foot. Here, I'm just putting these little things up. I love these br these little brushes for the way that they can do branches for me. I loves it. Hopefully you love it. These angles are the bomb. I also have in my red handle line a really sharp heavy bodied angle. There's so many angles. There's always angles. And I'm just bringing those little branches up. Like these. Like see I'm going to come right here and say you need a branch. Woo! <laughs> it's not like nature was particularly careful about everything it grew. So why I got to be so careful? I don't. So I'm going to just wipe this out a little bit. And I'll get some of my yellow on here. Boom, 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 boom. Got me yelling that up. Boom, boom, boom. 
Get a little white into it. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Let's find the reflection. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Get these treats. Using the shape of the brush to imply, aren't I? Yeah. I love using the shape of the brush. I might get some of my red in there. To just imply a couple things. Just talk about it a little bit. Like stroke, stroke, stroke. So where are my strokes focused? They're focused at the front of the tree. That's looking lovely. I feel like we can plant some more stuff out there, don't you? Yeah. Am I going to do every bench and every little thing? Probably not. I do kind of like the pine, but I don't want to have to put the weird downward pine stuff because I don't think it's going to add to the painting. A lot of times I'll look at an image and go, does this bush add a lot to the design? No. Right? <laughs> some bush might add, but all that bush, no. And there are some things here that I'm like, maybe not. But I really like some of the blue flowers and some of the things that are happening down below. And I might play with those a bit. So those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking about when I'm looking at what I might do or not do in a piece, right? Like I might take my phthalo green and my phthalo blue together, a lot more phthalo green, and get some of my Indian yellow. And I might come right here. And make this beautiful, this is going to be such a brighter space. Right? And I might even add a little bit of something that's happening here. Like I'm going tap, tap, tap. Because that could add, that, that could add a little interest. And if it could add interest, then I'm into it. A little, little bit coming down on the ground adds interest. So it's like, how do I talk about stuff and I add interest? Is it interesting? This is going to be wider at the base than it is at the top. I'm making little rustic little brush strokes. I'm into it. You can always come here and get a little of the darker even in there, just tapping that in, making sure there's some values that you're you're playing with, right? What could happen here? So I'm going to, again, get into this kind of green, blue, and yellow. And I'm going to tap up this sort of upward little stroke. So I'm making little upward strokes. Upward, upward. I'm going to play with something that's here, but I'm going to exaggerate it in a minute. Now, get some yellow all in that mix. Yellow, 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 yellow. And a little white. On the front. You can even be like, oh, maybe there's some right there coming down the tree. So greenery, right? The tree is affected. Let's light the front of this. We're lighting the front, letting it be. Look at it. When, it. when you back up and you let it be, when you're on it, if you're on it, it looks like a crazy mess. When you back up, it's rather lovely. And then while I'm here, I'm going to really rinse out, make sure I have some nice clean water. I'm going to get a little of my blue and a little of the white together. If I need a little of my phthalo in there to pop it, I'll get that. You know, phthalo was made to replace Prussian blue before they figured out how to stabilize Prussian blue. They're not exactly the same color, but they were created for artists for the same kind of effect. And what happened is we as artists, well, we benefited a lot because we got two really cool blues once they went back and figured out how to stabilize the Prussian blue. See that little pop of blue? It's a nice thing. And then a nice thing. 
we'll come up in here and let's do some more of our work in our trees, right? A little more work in our trees. Get a little of our pink and a little of our white. You want to get a little Prussian blue into it? You can. That's going to cool it up. Start to tell some of this story right here, right? Oh, wow. That's like, you know, telling some of that strong story. I can come here and really put in a little cluster now. Grab up a bunch of this paint. Let's really play with it. The layering is fun, isn't it? It is. It just gives us something I, on a Saturday to enjoy. I just love this pink. Yeah, I do too. This is about two seconds of sponges. Sponge, 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 sponge. Done! Now, every once in a while, I might want to come back. I'm going to get some of my white. I want to add some little whites to some of the flowers here. You know what I'm doing? Not all of them, but some. Isn't that nice? Got the little white in that. You can do some little lighter pinks into there. So we're really like having a deep pink and a light pink and we're playing. You like we're to dance around there a lot. It. Huh? You, you dance around there a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. It's no, just it's a, good. Sometimes it's nice to pull it around and then you, you step back and you're like, where do I want a little color? And you get back from it and you're like, oh, some nice light value could be could be appreciated right here. And, you know, maybe we appreciate some right here through here saying some of this has worked its way through the tree, right? You want to talk about where it's worked its way into the tree. it does it doesn't just stand contained not going anywhere not being anything it it wants to play with all the stuff now you're just standing back to get sort of a better right a better yeah idea. sometimes i'll stand back to get like kind of a better sense of things i'm gonna get my green and a little bit of my yellow ochre together and before i get this next bit in i'm gonna you know kind of make sure that this is nice and i'm gonna be putting another tree in but i want to just make sure i've got another layer the green, yellow ochre. There we go, guys. Look, we're going to just paint this little strokes, little pull stroke, pull stroke, pull. See what I'm just doing? Corner of the yeah. brush. Different green value. A little muted down the front. And then an interesting thing, if you go into the sagey greens like I just did, then you can highlight with a little sagey green. Look at that. And it creates another little value set. Playing in your forest, isn't it? Sagey. The sages have happened. We all like a little sage. Now, we're going to get our uh, nice half. This is the uh, half inch angle, and I'm going to get a little of my red and a little of my brown. It's okay if I put a little of my brushing into it. Just enjoying the wealth of color. And I will just go ahead and talk about my last little tree. It's going to be right here. He's going to have a bush, but I didn't like the big just shrubbery. So I was like, I don't think I really want to do that. I like the, the, the big shrubberies. Did you? Yeah, I just didn't want to do that one part of it at all. I didn't think it was going to add. I'm going to add some shrub coming in front of him, but I didn't want it just to all be bush and then some branches floating out behind the bush. I, I think it must have been all the time I spent with the knee whoop nights. With the what? <laughs> the nights of knee. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought you were like, I don't really like the direction you're taking this painting. I didn't know you were like <laughs> Monty Pythoning on me. <laughs> No, 
they they I, although I really do like the way that you've lit these the trees from the inside of the lane. Yeah. I do like to do that. I do very much. I see I like that last heavy tree there. Yeah, it really really turned out nice. It's it's interesting. There's nice negative space, there's nice positive space. You know, and I'm not saying that we don't take a tree branch, right? Maybe over from this side and really take a minute to talk about this one. It can even kind of come off the canvas and be highly visible. We're okay with that. We're not afraid. I don't know. Maybe we are. Say for sure. We're just talking about now this this heavier weighted weighted tree branch. So now we're talking about a bigger boy that's sitting here really yeah. catching our focus. So we're thinking about those things. That's all we're doing. We're just thinking about it. Just, hmm. What interesting thing could it do? Well, it could have a very interesting branch that came forward here. So branches are coming in and off the canvas, aren't they? And that's what we're talking about. So I'm going to press in, and I'll bring this one up. Look at that. Look at us going. How are we feeling about this? I'm going to come over. Really and... good. Huh? Okay. Really, really good. Is this like the girl in the water with the hair? Yeah, this is fantastic. This I mean, like I Everybody is really digging this. The, you know, Cinema doesn't get to see chat, so she's kind of asking me, like, hey, what's going on? And, yeah, yeah, everybody's really, really enjoyed this. Um, you know, we've had over 500 people here checking this out, and it's been really, really nice hanging out here, chatting with everybody. It's been pretty fantastic. Um, that's why I've been semi-distracted here in chat, just having a good time with everybody. Oh, he's so. just amazing. I really appreciate John's help to even make this show. Could not do it without him. Can I ask for two favors, babe? Coffee and... Coffee and fresh water. Okay. So but... about this time, um, because we're using a lot of dark pigments, like Prussian blue, like black, like brown, our water will get murky. And then when we go to make our bright greens or our bright pinks, it, the pigment in the water can impact the saturation of our paint and make our painting seem dull and lifeless. So it's always a good idea... <gasps> Oh, look, there's the hoot meter All right, so definitely this is not a one hoot. This is not the meter for this painting. <laughs> right? But that would be like what you might see. And so say I said a painting was a one hoot. You would see the Sherpa rating, one hoot, one small, slightly relaxed orange owl. And the owls get actually a little more fluffy and agitated looking as they're, they increase in size. And... um. So that's sort of funny. And then you guys come by, and then you rate it, and that little paintbrush will move as the community rates it. So hopefully, so if you guys remember, we did a crowdfunder a while back, and we funded a studio rebuild, which we're in the middle of, and then we also overfunded. So things that we talked about doing in our overfunding was like to improve the searchability of stuff on the website, to make traceables easier to find and get, to make those features easier, which many of you guys know, we have like done a major overhaul. People are like blown away. And then we added bonuses of things like the Hootameter. And that's not it. There's some really cool stuff all around, like you guys know. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff. So every single thing that came from that crowdfunder, what we've done is we just said, what would make the show better and easier for you guys? Because it's 700 paintings. Like, how do you even search that, right? Right, and so we had, we we actually had to build our own search engine so that you guys could come in there and find out where are the umbrella paintings, where are the girl paintings, where are the butterfly paintings, where are the shark week paintings. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, some other websites were not thrilled because all of a sudden our stuff was searchable. <laughs> I got a well, little notes. Actually, I, I got mean, a little note from a couple, but that's cool. Yeah, but I mean. I was like, I don't know what you mean, but I just made it more searchable. I don't know. It's like, yeah, you know, we just got to make guys. it easier for you guys. Yes. 
for you guys, it is. Would you, you guys have to have it easier, um, you know, and hey, if it brings up the whole art vertical, so be it, right? Like if it's got to be easier everywhere, I think that's the best thing ever. We all inspire each other, don't we? Indeed. We all like lift each other up and say, hey, let's, we can do this better. We can get there better. Pretty cool system. All right. And also, it's so, so hard to find something, sometimes things on, you know, the YouTube. This pink is so pink. Yeah, well, that's quinacridone. That's quinacridone. So John's done a lot of the spearheading and the beta testing and everything for the website, which I'm super proud of, and I want to say thank you, and I want to thank you to everyone who's helped us do that. Super grateful for the feedback. Like when you're like, whole page is gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm adding this next big tree over here. And he's kind of a big boy, and, you know, he's got some beautiful, lovely green on him, which I may actually play with, you know? We're going to just pull these strong, thoughtful branches up here. Thoughtful branches. Thoughtful. Are you thoughtful? John's thoughtful. I th I'm full of thoughts. I think about that things. Is you over there? I just, that, well, I, I think it was more daydreaming, but... You know, now I'm gonna make a little bump off the back of this tree. I like trees when they're like, like kind of crickety and and sort of like have had weather and things happen to them. So sometimes I'll art pull up my tree a bit. So browns tend to be transparent. If you're painting along and at this moment are finding yourself feeling super frustrated with the brown, breathe in deeply. Browns oftentimes come from natural resources. They tend to be transparent. They're actually a lot in common with yellows, which are also transparent as a pigment. And so there's just some of that that you're going to be dealing with as an artist. And that's okay. I'm going to just bring that nice, big, heavy branch that we have over here, right? Get that nice, heavy branch. Now, we're just putting in some big branches. If you go to, the, they were just asking, where you can find the uh, Hoot Rating Meter. meter. Oh, Hoot cool. It's on all of the project pages on our website. So if you just go, click on the link in the description down below, it'll bring you to the website, and that's a project page. It'll list all of the materials needed. It'll have a link to the traceables, reference photos, and it'll show you that, uh, that Hoot Meter so you can vote. Oh, look at those trees. I love the trees. Look at the trees. Trees are beautiful. I love trees. I'm a tree hugger. Like, literally, I'll hug a tree. I, I it does have... make the neighbors look at you sideways, but, you know, sometimes a tree needs a hug. I, sometimes I a human trees. needs a tree hug, so. It's true. It's very true. And, I mean, I'm, like, from childhood a tree hugger. Yes, yeah, true. <laughs> it ain't new. <laughs> So I'm going to start highlighting some of this. I'll get some of my yellow ochre out and maybe some of the dark color I've been using to create my trees. The yellow ochre warms it into the yellows and helps me get that feeling of it being sunlight. I may put out some more of my titanium white. As you're painting, if you're very new to art, you need twice as much white as any other color that you have. And everyone in the room is about to erupt and go, oh my gosh, I go through my white. It's such a fast rate. Yes, white. You need more of it. And it's one of the paints that I would recommend upgrading first if you're painting um, very economical paints and you're wondering, like, when do I need to upgrade? When, what do I need to get? I would say the first color to improve is your white. My two cents. I'm going to just make little bar a, a barky strokes right here. I like these little barky strokes. This brush does the nicest little barky strokes. I don't paint enough with my half inch pencils, and I love them so much. Isn't that wonderful how that just creates like, boom, tree bark. Like, what? Yep, tree bark, right there. Just made it. So easy to make a tree bark. I just add a little burnt sienna to this, and I'm just still enjoying my little tree barkiness. 
where your branches are visible and prominent and not covered by something, you are going to want to also include the tree barkiness on them. But a lot of this up here, I'm going to finish out with um, cherry blossoms, so we won't see it, so you don't have to be as specific. But where you've got a tree branch really showing, you're going to want to be specific about the Be specific about the fact that there's tree bark. That. You'll love it. It'll really please you. And you probably started painting for like a reason, like enjoy yourself or get back to a passion that you had when you were young or to deal with stress. So let me advise you now to do things that please you in art. Like even when people write me something, they're like, I totally don't like how you teach. I'm like, cool. There's a lot of people teaching art on YouTube and you're going to like one of them a lot. Please keep painting. And the reason I do that is because I really believe what I'm saying here. You've got to please yourself. You've got to be happy in your art space. Be happy in your art space. Pick yourself first in that because it's for your health, your well-being, and your spiritual direction, if that makes sense. It does. So. But <laughs> please stay with me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm okay. I'm going to just come here with this a little bit. I don't have to take far up because a lot of this is going to have this really cool green thing on it and I think I am going to play with some of that green so I'm just going to bark up some of the tree branches that might some of it that might be peeking out and then the rest I'm going to make sure that is all under this interesting little green space bark 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 now while all of this is having a dry I'm going to stay in that same sort of brush type. I really like the Cambridges for my scumbly stuff. And so I'm going to get a number eight Cambridge. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to get a little of my thalo green and thalo blue. More thalo green than, uh, green than blue. And I'm going to definitely go ahead and make some darker greens right here. Let's have some of this go over, right? Wherever, whenever we layer that green over a little bit, it's like it helps that curb be a curb, doesn't it? It really does. And I'll bring some of this up here. Maybe even a little bit up here. And maybe even some here. A small amount added. And let's come here. You can always even deepen a blue, uh, the blue-green by adding the Prussian. And we can talk about a bush that maybe is right here peeking out and is low and high, right? It can come right over this. I just wanted to have that tree like show a little more than it did in the reference. I just felt it would look better. Let's find out if I'm right. I'm just... I love how like... I, I don't even know how to say it, like, just intensely awesome. These trees just... They came out? Yeah. They it's... are amazing, right? Let's add some Indian yellow to our green. I could do. You can grab a little bit of white so it really pops. Come here and make sure that we've got highlights, right? On all of these little branches that could be out and on... On this bush here as it comes in, in front of the tree. It's dark green behind, but where it's hitting the center of the alley, like the tree itself, it would be somewhat in highlight, isn't it? It's loose, it's light. Shrubberies. Oh, I love a shrubberies. Let's put some highlights down here. If you need to get more into your Indian yellow, no, get more in there and you're on. Push this forward. And you can always change your brush stroke. If you want to change, like, the implication of what's down here, you just change the feeling of the stroke, and it can actually change the whole feeling of the plant that you're talking about. So there. So we do have a bush here, but we do also clearly have a, a tree, which is distinctly there. And I felt like those two things needed to be there in relationship to each other. All right, rinse, 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 rinse. All right, now let's get our dark green, which is our 
burnt umber and our thalo green, right? I've still got this, and we're gonna just tap. Look how I'm tapping, just stippling this green on this tree trunk. Can we see that? Now I'm gonna get these uh, little ivies in. Yeah, I'm stippling, 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 stippling. Stipple back here. I'm stippling here. I'm gonna stipple up each branch, okay? Yeah, stipple it up. Stippling it up. So this is that tapping textural stroke. Tap, tap, tap. Now what's helping me with this, if I had a really soft brush, this could be hard. So if you're having a hard time, fill your brush. Is it soft like a makeup brush? If it's soft like a makeup brush, it may be too soft for this technique. You want something that's stiff enough to stipple. But first, it just looks like a green mushy mess, right? Yeah, I was going to ask, what's kind of the, you're, it seems like you're just now messing up that cool tree now you put in. add a little bit of your uh, green, your phthalo green, Indian yellow. Yellow green, Indian yellow, and we're going to come here and we're going to start. And start to stipple very carefully some ivies. I'm using more of the corner of my brush now. I'm leaving some dark and some highlighted. Isn't that crazy? Wow. That Okay, so that did, do, I did not see that. It's just one of those fun things. I could have probably pulled it off with a sponge, too. And I can actually highlight pretty much each outer edge. It would only be really dark, like, in the center of the of the branch, right? But as it's hitting the sunlight, it's going to catch some. And this is going to let me talk about a little bit of ivy on my tree. It does the... The brush I have does absolutely help. Brush I have absolutely oh. for a fact help. Well, well, you, I keep thinking you're about to go back. I am. <laughs> Just giving this one more layer of highlight. Sometimes brain neuron mirroring isn't working quite as much as they say. But I like when there's a little ivy on a tree, so I'm glad that I went for that. You guys like when there's a little ivy on a tree? That's so cool. And we can do a one hoot version of this. I love I really that love this. That tunnel is really amazing. And I can't tell you how often somebody has asked me to show them how to do this type of thing, so... <sighs> All right, so we've got some nice different little plants. We've got a little bit of our white left. Let's bring it over to our pink. I'm going to come and load this big boy up with my pink. You can go ahead and get a little of the alizarin in here if you want. Big boy, pink. Now, let's play. Oh, you're going I'm back now up there. on the corner, and I'm going to work through a lot of this very quickly. I won't take out every bit of my little work that I did in the beginning, because that would be pointless. But I am going to add so much. Do the background. Not quite a stipple, but I am using the size of the brush in the corner to help me fill this in a little bit. See how that's looking? Oh, that's so pretty. Let's make sure that we're taking some of this pink in front of some of this ivy. See how I've done? It's going to really pop as it goes in front. And that's going to help this too seem... Oh, there we go. Now that pretty, now it's all full, isn't it? Oh. Pink, 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 pink. Make sure that I've got a little corner here. I don't want to take out all my blue. I don't want to take out all my green. I do, do, do. 
want to add more leaves. Let's pull some more leaves here and there. Here and there, guys. How we doing? Pretty good. Pretty okay. Let's get some of our white on here. Pink in our white and get a lighter, lighter pink. Let's make sure that we're shading even those pink little clusters that are out there, right? do this. You can do this. You've got this. Start to get anxious. Breathe in. Breathe out. Every once in a while you'll see me assessing too. We all assess. We all stop. We all take a notice of what we're doing. I'll highlight. Right here. Just focus a little bit, make sure that this feels cohesive and thoughtful. A little more white. I'm gonna rinse out. I'm gonna go back to just my small little brush. And I'm gonna do some playful things here. One thing is I'm gonna take a little bit of my Indian yellow. And I may have to get one that just has none of the green in it. Okay, I want none of the green. Got my white over here. I don't need that much. I'm gonna get my small brush. I'm gonna rinse out really well. And I'm gonna take a little of that Indian yellow into my quinacridone. A little bit. I'm gonna get some white. And this is very loosely mixed as you can see. And I'll make some of my little strokes. Load. The slight warmth of this pink will help it play against the cool pink for the rest of the paint. And you can work some of these smaller brush strokes through some of that. Now how we're doing? Can you guys see the, the difference in the pinks? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. This is a total power move. Power move. I love how super pink these are. I don't always necessarily. There's two ways to approach painting. There's the painting exactly what we see methodology. There's an infinite. But there's a common couple of ways that of what people come to an art of painting with, and that is I'm going to paint exactly what I see, right? And, and this isn't about realism or not, because I've seen artists that uh, definitely dabble in uh, realism be quite fanciful in their work. So, but, but it's about like I'm seeing the light this way, and I am accurately representing to you the light. Hudson, you know river, right? Everything there is about trying to tell people how things look, but also layered into that, right, is how they felt. 
So we're not just trying to talk about a tree-lined street with cherry trees that are, are, you know, here doing their thing. We're also trying to talk about a street that feels a certain way to us. What you see me doing here, and I may just wipe off with my towel, is just offloading the paint from my brush a little bit. I'm just bringing some white over. And I'm going to just make sure that as I'm layering, I'm layering these values. Have fun. I'm having fun. Hopefully you're having fun. And then we're going to look at it for a minute. Let's evaluate. All right. I'm making much smaller marks right here. I am being maybe a little more detailed and specific in this moment than I was with the rest of the painting. The reason is, is that the branch is sort of focal, isn't it? It is, yeah. Let's get a little more of this. Focus on a few more little branches. Not every one, because I too much, but just a few, pick a couple. See how that looks. Do we have a couple little branches that have caught the light of the street? Yeah, I think so. Now, the street is clearly swept, isn't it? That is not going to do. So I'm going to get a little of my pink. And first of all, I'm going to tap maybe near my curbs. Some little, little leaves that have fallen. Right? Street sweeper has pushed them up into the curb, but also going to pop out a few that have landed in my street. I thought a long time about, do I make it wet? That's always fun to do, because then you get to make little mirrors in the ground. But I realized what I really wanted to talk about was the way the petals and the pink up at the top became part of what was happening down below. Here we go. If, as you go back, you have to be lighter, okay, guys, if you're talking about the pink back here, because they would be barely visible, wouldn't they? Here you could see it. Here you might talk about it a little bit. Yeah, that's like, oh, isn't that pretty? It really is. Let's get a little light white on here and also come and add a little, in a couple spots. Right? You're really getting close on this, aren't you? We're done. We're just wow. adding little leaves. You're going to be just under two hours. This is really? awesome. Really? Yeah. Two hours. One hour and 53 minutes. Quite Get a painting that. for one hour and 53 minutes, isn't it, guys? <laughs> that's a lot of painting. And look, we've got a lot of paintings that are 20 minutes. A lot of paintings that are 20 minutes. I'm pretty happy with that. I love All right, it. let's give that a signature. Call that a beautifully well-spent day together. I'm so appreciative of your time. everything that got you here today I'm going to take my little detail brush and I'm going to do a weird thing I'm going to sign the Sherpa very quietly here in the corner I always try to do my signature where it's there and you can see it but it isn't it doesn't disrupt the whole painting. So if you're standing back and looking at it, you're not looking at a big, massive mark. Um, not that Peter Max is wrong. <laughs> I'm certainly not saying that. But what I'm saying is that I, as an artist and many other artists, uh, we recognize that our signature is part of the composition, and I just try to consider it. Guys, however you, however you sign your painting, whatever you're doing in your life, make sure you're good to yourself and be good to each other. And we want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.